Hello, welcome back to Let's Build. So this is the build from my stream so far. Well, not quite so far, actually. I've done a bit more, and you'll see what I've done as we get through it. But this is the build from my stream. So I stream on twitch.tv forward slash sjin, S-J-I-N, if you don't know it. And we're going through Astral Sorcery. As you can see here, we've got two towers and a bridge and some wall, not all that much. And as we scoop in closer here, you can get a sneak peek at all the chests and uh, crafting benches and things that I've got set up just in the interim. We're going through a mod called Astral Sorcery that's a lot of fun. To start off this build, we realized some of the multi-block structures that we need have uh, one block in the center. So you saw me there copying and pasting the whole thing, moving it just one block to the right. So we had a wider bridge and a bigger gap by one block between the two towers. And now we need a lot more space to build. We create a lot of space out the front of the fortress and it's looking pretty fine. But what we're doing now is coming out behind the fortress. We're calling spell hold, placeholder name. And we're just using our lumber axe to chop down these trees. The trees are fine, but man, this forest is so dense. It took me a long time to chop my way through all of these trees. Not just that, but the mushrooms are very difficult to deal with. But we need to make sure we have enough space going forwards. We'll need a lot of space back here. And I'll show you in a bit why we need that space and why we're expanding this way. Because Astral Sorcery uh, interacts with Starlight and the certain locations on the map that have a greater concentration of Starlight. So I'll show you later where exactly the patch is that we're trying to clear out. Now once the trees were gone, uh, there's some beehives here and there. I, ch I cleared them up because unfortunately the axe doesn't chop beehives, but that's okay. Not only trees have to go though, we're chopping away at some of these outcroppings of dirt and stone just to clear up, get a bit more of a flat area. Not perfectly flat. If we wanted that, it would have been probably much easier just to absolutely flatten the area. But you can see here, we've just got a nice natural looking wide open space now behind Spellhold. Great. Loads of space to build. Can't wait to get started on what's going to come out the back here. Oh, but there's of course this ugly little kind of perimeter to deal with. Now we've got some cool tools in World Edit that let you plonk down little balls of dirt, which is what we're doing here, and uh, smoothing that off. I mentioned earlier that there are places where starlight pools a little bit more densely than others. And it's a bit dark, but if your eyes are keen, you'll be able to see a nice patch of blue smoke down there with some twinkles as well, which means this area is super great for starlight. So we want to build a tower here where we can do some of the astral sorcery magic. Now I've put down some ceramic rainbow bricks to mark exactly the center of that spot. Now again, an old trick I like to do is use different color wool to map out the foundations of an area. If you're gonna to build towers and walls and things, it's good to just plot down on the ground in some bright colors exactly where you want this to go. So you can see the black wall here is gonna be where the walls extend from the front all the way back here. The red square that surrounds the, uh, the flashing rainbow brick are gonna be two towers and they're gonna reach up to the heavens where we can get more starlight. And the blue wall here in the middle is just a marker for me so I know exactly where the middle is and that'll help me with other things that I build later on. It's always good to remember where the middle of anything you're doing is. Now in the true fashion of Let's Build, we're gonna copy and paste some of this wall section, rotate it. Unfortunately, when you rotate things like this, uh, you can run into some problems with the stairways because they stay the direction they were when you copied them. So you have to dig them up and put them back down. But again, once you have your, uh, your little pattern in, in position, you can literally just copy and paste all the way back to where these towers are gonna be. Now we stopped just short because we're gonna connect those in a little bit manually. Now, Astral Sorcery interacts with Starlight and the closer you are to the heavens, the more Starlight you can get. So at about 130 blocks above bedrock, we've marked a little platform that's gonna be the top 
of both of these towers that we built. And that's the best place to gather starlight. How are we going to get up there? Well, we're going to have a grand staircase in the middle of the build. At the moment, this is just one block wide because it's a placeholder. It'll help me get in my mind where we want the stairs going forwards. Now there's a, a long, a long gap between where the stairs going purely diagonally reach the top. So I wanted to cut the stairs in half and make sure that long gap is somewhere in the middle. That way we can uh, integrate it with a tower that's in the middle of the build. And that's why there's this big gap between those two staircase sections that you see right now. Don't worry, it's a work in progress. But there's a lot of counting, a lot of maths that goes on in this build. We copy and paste it again, the walls from either side. Now we're just going back and you can see here, manually connecting up where the wall lowers slightly. Because the wall comes down as the, with the natural contour of the world. And now what's this? Well, we've copied and pasted the wall over to the other side, and now we have to just come along the top. We missed a bit. We skimmed the top. So we're just adding in the tops of the walls that we missed from the other side. Good as new. Now it's time to start building these towers. Now, ooh, building towers. I wasn't sure. Sometimes I get this funny idea in my head that I want to experiment with a tower. And uh, you'll see what I mean later on. But to start with, I wanted to uh, put some pretty impressive support struts on the corners or the sides of these towers. So you can see me here with the marble brick and the aquamarine making these kind of, they're kind of like Eiffel Tower struts actually now I look at it, now I think about it. This is definitely not the Eiffel Tower. It's probably a bit taller if I'm being honest. But we added one at the back as like a test case. That worked. So we copy and pasted it around the other side. And that's great. And there's only two sides where these are going to apply because the other side faces the walls, which are going to be a kind of bracing in themselves, and the other side reaches out towards where the other tower will be. Now you can see here, I experimented a lot with this tower. I wanted it to be a kind of like a, a spiral tower. It was going to kind of fold in on itself, spin to the side. It was very ambitious and ultimately a little bit too ambitious because nothing I arrived at really looked right. You can see me here just experimenting with spinning a square. But it just didn't look right. Just couldn't get the right look. So instead what we're going for is a kind of hourglass look. An hourglass feel. All of the sides are going to slope in and the center is going to be much thinner than the top and the bottom. It's going to have that kind of hourglass figure, so to speak. And that wasn't too difficult to achieve. As you see me come across the other side, we only have to do uh, this kind of effect on one side of the tower and then we can copy it over to the other side because they're all the same blocks and there were no stairs used in this side of the build. I like the gradient. It's a pretty, it's a pretty cool gradient. And then I just spam this around the other sides and boom, we have our kind of hourglass tower. This tower needs a core, and of course the running theme at the moment is certainly the aquamarine. So the middle of the tower is going to be this thick block of aquamarine. And I'm experimenting here with marble pillars to hold it up, just like a normal hourglass. But I wasn't really happy with what I arrived at, so I uh, cut that away and went back to uh, designing different styles for making this tower look different. You can spend hours and hours experimenting on big builds like this, and it's good to. It's easy to kind of fall back on established concepts and ideas and remake the same thing over and over again because you know it looks good. But if you don't experiment, you'll never find that new thing that you've never thought of before. You'll never be able to express yourself creatively. And here you can see, once I had one corner of that tower done, I could literally just copy it around, and we have this kind of odd-looking runic hourglass-esque shaped tower. It's got some detail here. Chiseled into it are um, holes in a kind of runic style. And there we go. It's pasted across the other side. And we've got these kind of blue aquamarine fins 
that come out. Now, oh man, massive regret. They do kind of look like fish. And if I gave those guys fish heads at the top, these would look like two fish just sticking out of the ground. It's certainly an odd look. But this is where we're at at the moment. This is the build so far. And uh, I streamed on this build, so if you tuned in last time, you would have seen it. Now, if you're watching now, we'll have gone a little bit further. And uh, just stay tuned to the next Let's Build to see that unfold. But we have two towers now at the right level where we need to continue. So check out the stream. I've been Stjin, and until next time, keep on building. Take care.